I did it. I did. I I did what I said I would. I I beat the stupid ass game. I I beat the game. I beat the game. I beat the game without dying. I beat Dark Souls without dying a single time. It was hell. There were 51 attempts. 51. I, I don't know what I was thinking when I was trying to do this. Alright? Most of my attempts were on Switch of all devices. Fuck it. Uh, <clears throat> Where do I even begin with this? Jesus Christ. So, it all, it all started with... Uh, this, me wanting to do this as my fourth playthrough of the game. I didn't really know much about what I was doing. I had somehow beaten the game three times before. And, uh, I wanted to try it again. I wanted to challenge myself a little more. Because the game is pretty easy, honestly. There are a lot of ways to get around bosses that would be hard if you were really trying to make it difficult for yourself. Like, Ornstein and Smo is normally hard if you just let Smo run out run at you, just kill Ornstein first, because he's easy no matter what you're doing, and then, um, just trap Smo behind a pillar, but, you know, whatever. I, I wanted to beat the game without dying, and I wasn't going to use a magic build, because I don't like magic in Souls Likes, it's, it's just not my thing, but whatever. I like melee builds, so fuck it. So, I want to talk briefly about this because it's one of my biggest gaming accomplishments of all time. I'm pretty fucking proud of it. And I want to show you some pictures too. So there's going to be a lot of that. But uh, let's start off with what I actually wanted to do. Let's start off with the rules. Rule number one and the most obvious rule of them all. Uh, don't die. Don't die in the game. There's one exception to this rule. And um... You know, it's don't die or you restart the entire game. You have to start your whole last file over. And uh, there is an exception to this rule, and that's your first encounter with Sethus Scalus. And Sethus Scalus is um, a boss where when you first encounter him at the top of the Duke's archives, uh, he's unkillable. You have to die to him in order to progress. There is a skip for this that involves some complicated platforming, but I did not do this. And by all accounts, it is not necessary to do this in order for it to be a no-death playthrough. So I decided not to do that skip. I decided to just uh, play the game as it expects you to play. And besides, I there is a possible Firekeeper's soul if you do actually uh, die to him first. And also, you get some other loot in there as well. And you find a pretty good farming spot for humanity by killing these snake things. These eels, I don't know what to call them. Rule number two is I must not modify the game in any way, even to do things like increase performance or graphics or anything else. Because there are mods for things like that. The performance for the game is actually not even that bad. Wouldn't need mods for that. But the point is to not modify the game at all for any reason. In any way. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's that's the entire extent of that rule. Uh, no multiplayer. Nothing involving online capability. So, uh, turn online off when you start the game. Uh, because online capa turning the online features on would enable things to happen like messages or invasions or co-op or, you know, uh, blood spots, which would each be able to help the player in one way or another, like killing invaders or invading other players, which would enable them to get free souls or humanity, which would help, or the uh, co-op player, for example, giving them an item that they aren't really supposed to have yet. Moreover, they could also make bosses or various enemies easier for them, and I don't really do co-op much in Dark Souls games anyway. When I do, it's from a, it's for a boss I've already beaten, or it's to make it more of a challenge, but you get the point. It's like, so they have double health when there's two players. But I'll get straight to the juice of it. So basically, uh, the reason I wanted to do this was because, again, I wanted to challenge myself. But also, to de sort of declare war on the fan for this game. There, there are uh, some people out there 
They will gatekeep you for the dumbest shit I have seen. Elden Ring fans. Gatekeep a goldfish. In case you don't know, there's a YouTuber called Point Crow, which you may have heard of. And uh, he had his goldfish play Elden Ring. And they were actually gatekeeping the fucking goldfish for being overleveled. And for having good gear. And it's, it's like, well, yeah, no shit, it's a goldfish. What do you expect it to do? Go level one? With their fucking fists? No, with no armor and everything? Like, come on. And then there's people stating that Dark Souls is harder than Elden Ring. And I saw PewDiePie's video where he beat Elden Ring without getting killed. And uh, that was another reason I wanted to do this. Because people were saying Dark Souls was harder. So I basically wanted to kick this Phantom's ass. I'm pretty good at video games. I play Sekiro and Cuphead for fun. Uh, and that was sort of the point. I'm basically showing off. Alright. So now I'll get to the actual meat of the thing. We got to the juice, but that's not the actual meat. So, the playthrough. They, I, I had about 51 attempts. Give or take, 51. And, uh, it sure was a, it sure was hell. This took me hundreds of hours on my Switch and on PC combined, which were the platforms I played it on, and some attempts on my Steam Deck. A lot of them, actually, I think a good 15 to 20 attempts on Steam Deck, and maybe 5 attempts or so on PC, and then on Switch, I'd say about, I don't know, a good 20-something attempts as well. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much on each platform, but I think it was around 51 in total. And I think that because I'm sort of just rounding each time I have a sort of cluster of attempts. A lot of the the attempts didn't even take that long to finish because sometimes I die real fast, like to the skeletons where you can go left. When you reach Firelink Shrine, you get to these skeletons and they can kill you fast. But I figured them out. It took me a lot of attempts, but I did in fact figure them out. And I did overall also figure out this whole ass strategy to beat the game. Step by step, the entire fucking way, all the way. Like right down to every treasure chest, every item you can pick up, every route you should take. I figured out that you can skip the entirety of Anor Orlando by jumping over the staircase and landing right on top of this uh, bridge. You were supposed to go through the entirety of the cathedral and everything, but I didn't because I am not suicidal. And I did that a million times before. I didn't want to waste my time again. So, what else did I do? So, let me actually get to what happened in the playthrough. So, first seven playthroughs were about the same. I chose the warrior class. I chose the master key, as I always do for every playthrough I do on this game. The master key is basically the objective, the objective best item to choose for a playthrough. Though, if you're that type of person, you can choose the Thief class, or whatever it's called. Get the Master Key anyway, and then choose a second starting item. You effectively get uh, two items with that. Yeah, another thing is, uh, what else? The class itself. You could choose the Thief or Bandit or whatever it's called. No, the, no, the Bandit is the one that I chose. The Thief is the one that gets the key. And you could choose the thief if you wanted, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I was not going to do that. The thief class was kind of stupid. The armor is sort of worse, and I needed the strength that the bandit basically, uh, championed with. 14 strength. The bandit has 14 strength starting, starting off. And 9 dexterity, so, right off the bat, you can get ready to use this Y-hander after killing the first boss in the game, the Asylum Demon. Which was why I chose that after I went seven attempts with the warrior. Now, I went with the warrior because I was just comfortable with that class. He had a cool looking sword armor that actually protected a little bit. The bandit had uh, worse armor, but the warrior had worse health and stamina. And I needed that stamina because I needed the larger equip load. So, I will now recount to you as briefly as I can, because this video is already uh, 
10 minutes long. Exactly 10 minutes, but I will now recount to you how my strategy was going to go at first. At first, I was just going to... First, I was just thinking about the basic parts of the playthrough. Just like uh, step one, get past Fire Link Shrine. Step two, get Zweihander. Step three, go into Undead Burg. Step four, kill Taurus Demon. Step five, get Solaire on my side. You know what I mean. But like... Over time, I actually learned more and more about the game. It was kind of surreal, honestly, but moving on. So, I used the warrior for a while until I realized how I should probably be doing this playthrough, and it was when I reached this sort of breaking point. I got really far into the game without knowing I could even get that far without getting killed. I was in the warrior class. I chose the warrior as my class, and by attempt number five or something uh, I made it all the way to the bell gargoyles and I killed them and I stopped there for the day and I wanted to continue tomorrow but uh and then I just died like 10 minutes into my gameplay the next day after that but but I was planning on going straight into blight town which I Mostly feared because I didn't at the time know that there was an easier way to get down there. There, There is a much easier way. If you don't know, uh, you can go into Blighttown easier by going straight downstairs from Firelink Shrine into Valley of the Drakes, going across the bridge, and then taking a right, and then just going into that cave. And then that's pretty much the easiest way you can get down there, your first go-around. Because the alternative is to get through Lower Undead Burg, and then, uh, what is it? The Depths, and then the Catacombs. I think it's called the Catacombs, I don't know. And then you have to deal with going the long way through Blight Town after that. And there is no easy way to get back up to Firelink Shrine, where most of the merchants go after you first find them. So when I discovered that shorter route, I was pretty happy with myself. The issue being I died almost right away when I entered Blighttown on that attempt, and then on the very next attempt I somehow got to Blighttown again, and then I died trying to get to Quilog, and then after that I made it to Quilog on that next attempt, on attempt number 7, and that's when I realized it was kind of my fault for choosing the wrong class. And I say that because the bandit has higher health and stamina, and the highest strength out of any of the other classes even though he has the weakest armor. But it doesn't really matter, because I was going to use the Elite Knight Armor anyway, which you can find in Darkroot. In this forest, before going to the Moonlight Butterfly boss battle, it's surrounded by these living tree things. I don't know what you actually call them. Anyway. So then my strategy sort of took form. I was going to choose the Bannock class with the Master Key. I was going to kill Oscar, because he's a waste of time to talk to. You can just kill him and get his shit immediately. And then, uh, what is it? Yeah, and then I was going to deal with the rest of Undead Asylum. I was going to get the Zweihander Sword. I was going to go past uh, everything as fast as I could, but I wanted to get 24 strength and 10 dexterity uh, every single attempt, and that took forever every single time. There, there was one specific attempt, which happened later, where I didn't use the Zweihander. I just used the Battle Axe that I got at the start of the game from choosing the bandit class, which actually got me surprisingly far, and I will talk about that soon. Because for the next 15 or so attempts, I pretty much just struggled trying to figure out the skeleton's patterns. So like, I would die to the skeletons, and then I would sort of just try again. I would get these homeward bones that you would find in a chest, and then I would jump off that little cliff area, and then just try to get past the skeletons again. And that's when I realized, with my stupid-ass brain, that I could use the Homeward Bones to escape the Skeletons. Yeah. So, uh, I would get the Zweihander. I would get the collectible soul items, like, you know, Soul of the Lost Undead, Soul of the Unknown Soldier. I don't know what they're called. Alright, but I, kn I did know how much they gave me when I used them. And that was their only use anyway, so who cares? The main point was that I would get those and from going down the stairway that you could find. 
and then I would go back up that stairway, running away from the skeletons, get to the bonfire, and use it to reset the enemy positions in AI. And then I would go past Petrus of Thorland, or whatever he's called. That guy with the bull cut. That fat guy with the bull cut. Him. I would go up the stairs and go under where the elevator would be later. That shortcuts your way up and down between Undead Parish and Firelink. And then I would go under that, and then get the Homeward Bones, get the Y-Hander, and maybe the Wing Spear if I was feeling like it, but, you know, I never actually cared enough to get it after that sort of long slew of attempts. And then sometimes I would get the binoculars, even though I knew I would never use them ever. And then, uh, yeah. That would be, uh, how I would do it most of the time. But, but this Y-Hander was critical every single time. This Y-Hander was absolutely necessary for the build I was going for because it was a strength build. And this Y-Hander is a fucking godlike weapon. It, 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 I don't... How do I even say how uniquely good this Y-Hander is? Like, it's the longest sword I could find, especially early game. Which mean And it has the, one of the bigger hitboxes. And you can roll and do this stabbing motion. And then what that'll do is just destroy everything in your path and then you it's really big so when you take one swing it obliterates everything especially when it's fully upgraded okay but I would never actually fully upgrade it until my winning attempt so moving on <clears throat> anyway so it was like 20 attempts 21 attempts in my uh, glorious quest for skill, that I chose the bandit class, got, and I just went in with a battle axe, and this was on the switch, by the way, and I kind of just died in Sen's Fortress. I got all the way to Sen's Fortress, and I died in there. So, moving on. Uh, a couple months later, I decided to retry again, because I decided, you know, it wasn't really a rage quit, just more so I needed to study the game and learn how everything worked, watch other people's gameplay as well, and then see all the other parts of the game, just see if I would just make sure I wouldn't miss anything, basically. But more so how to get past Sense Fortress, because that area is, like, full of the most asshole design I've ever seen. You got, you got your traps, you got your snakes, you got snakes that shoot lightning at you. I fucking hate it. But then it just became easy on it. But then it just became fucking easy. Then the next time I finally got there, it was maybe five attempts later, I was on my Steam Deck. And I was playing Dark Souls, and I somehow got past uh, Sen's Fortress on one of the attempts that I made on there. And I got all the way to Ann Orlando. Now up until that point, and for every attempt after that, I decided I would go through the forest instead of going under this bridge thing where this dragon hangs out in Undead Berg, I would decide not to take that route. You know where the pig is? The giant pig? That you stab in the ass? Uh, I decided not to go with that route, but that I would go through that route later because you because I might get lucky and the pig might drop a helmet. And it did work sometimes, but not on the winning attempt, which I'll talk about. Uh, Yeah. So basically, I got all the way to Ann Orlando on this one attempt, and that's when I realized it could be done. That this whole endeavor could actually happen. And I actually made it past Ann Orlando, and I got all the way to the Catacombs, which I now just remembered is actually the prelude to Tomb of the Giants. And the Depths is an entirely different area. So, uh, sorry about that. Sorry for the confusion. I'm sure some of you actually remembered which one is which. But for some reason, my dumbass brain just couldn't handle that information. But it could handle all the lore of the actual game. God damn it. But, moving on. Uh. Oy. So much shit happened between then and now. My winning attempt was fucking last month. I, I remember. Like, it was in the... It was like fucking. I don't even remember. It it was last month at some point. 
it, it was somewhere, somewhere in September, but, alright, um, uh, that's not important, I'm, I'm just fucking wasting your time now, aren't I, let's move on to the point, so, uh, yeah, at that point, that was when I actually rage quit for the first time, like in my entire life, I, I had spent 10 hours, I had to throw all that shit away, but then I realized, alright, how to get past that area, and I sort of just unrage quit. The reason I died in the catacombs was because all these skeletons ganged up on me on this bridge, and they all basically shoved me off. I would have survived if I had the instinct to just kill them, but I didn't at the time, and that's when I just tried to... That's when I started... Uh, I bought some harder games to play. Like uh, Sekiro, I started playing a lot more than I normally would have. I bought Sekiro. And... Uh, I started playing that more than I normally would have. I already had a file that I was playing, and I'm still playing that file now. I just haven't been playing it a whole lot, but... I specifically remember in Sekiro... Uh, a very, very critical uh, mechanic is parrying, or deflecting, whatever you want to call it. They're the same thing. And it lowers uh, the enemy's posture, and then... If you get their posture down to zero, you can basically do what is Sekiro's equivalent of Doom's glory kill. And, um, for some reason, playing that game more sort of reinvigorated me to play Dark Souls even more than I was before. So I started playing again, and I went through another gruesome 15 attempts. Maybe 10. I don't exactly remember. Just trying to figure out everything. And at one point, I remember at attempt number 7 or something of those 10 attempts, I, I got to Anor Orlando again. And then every attempt subsequently after that, I would keep getting to Anor Orlando. But there was this one infamous attempt for me where I got to the bed of chaos. I didn't... I decided to go to the... I decided I would decide the order... First, I would go for the Four Kings, and then seat the Scalus. Then I would go for Bed of Chaos, and then I would go for uh, Grave Lord Nido. And those were the bot. That was the boss order I was planning on taking. And uh, I would kill Havel as early game as I could. Like the minute I could access him as an enemy, I would immediately try to kill him, because he would give me Havel's ring, which would make uh, the Elite Knight armor uh, pretty easy to. Uh, what is it? Pretty easy to wear without getting a heavy equip load. Anyway, after I died that first time to Bed of Chaos, I, I went to other videos about Bed of Chaos, and they had this weird method of throwing firebombs in between the branches in the boss arena to hit these things, and I was like, no way I'm going to remember the exact pattern of like what branches look like what and where to throw the firebombs. And also, fat chance, I would have... I would remember to have the firebombs equipped up to that point and be able to get to that same point because the where you have to throw the firebombs and stand when you throw them. And the reason for that is uh, mainly because I would be like 10 hours into the game at this point and there was a very low chance I was actually going to remember to do this. But whatever. I died to the bed of chaos. I won against Seath and I won against the four kings. And there were only two times I ever actually fought Seath. And the second time was the winning attempt, obviously. But for Bed of Chaos specifically, I died like seven times to this motherfucker. Bed of Chaos was complete ass. One of the worst boss fights I've ever seen. One of the worst designs. It's a puzzle boss. You have to get one side and hit that something on that side. Then you have to go to uh, something of equal measure that's on the other side, and then, you ha and then you have to damage it. It doesn't matter how much damage you do. You just have to hit it. doesn't matter with what. As long as it isn't fire-based, like pyromancy, or a purely fire-based weapon, like... I, I don't know. I don't know any pure fire-based weapons. Like, if you tried punching with your pyromancy or whatever flame, 
that probably wouldn't work, but I haven't tried it, so I don't know. So I developed this really weird strat where I would have this bow, which I probably wouldn't be able to wield. And what I would do is I would use that bow, and uh, I would buy a fuck ton of arrows from this undead merchant that you can find in the undead burg. Th this guy who tells you to jump off a cliff. I don't remember his name. I don't think he ever told me his name. And uh, he, he looks like the most brutally beaten up, bruised zombie you've ever seen. Not important. No, it is important though is that he sells you the arrows in infinite amounts. And they're very, very cheap. I think um, Andre also sells them, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, long story short, this would be my strategy every time I started the game, was whenever I got to Undead Burg, I would spend a fuck ton on arrows. And also on firebombs, because I would need the firebombs to get rid of Moonlight Butterfly. I needed the divine weapon for the catacombs, and I would upgrade a battle axe that I had at the start of the game. I would upgrade that to be the divine weapon. And uh, I would upgrade it to be the divine weapon, because I needed a divine weapon for the catacombs, because the skeletons there resurrect and I wasn't going to go looking for every single necromancer. I didn't really have a reason to anyway. And the reason, and I decided I would go and try to kill the Bed of Chaos before all the other bosses. And the reason was because then I would have access to Lost Isolith first. And that's where you could get this um, glow-in-the-dark hat thing, which helps you in Tomb of the Giants. And uh, you'd also have to get it before Solaire does. So you'd have to get to this door where... That you can find before fighting the fire sage demon in the demon ruins and use the uh, use the poison mist pyromancy which should kill it in a matter of time this bug thing it should kill this bug thing that's behind the door and it drops it and then solaire will just be stupid enough not to find its corpse with that hat thing on the ground and then solaire survives for the final boss and I get the hat thing, so it's all good. Now, I would need Slayer to survive this because he would be able to distract Gwyn during his boss fight. And he's the final boss. And there were about... I don't... God only knows what I tried. Uh, I never actually got to Gwyn except that one time on that finishing attempt. Where I finally fucking won. I'm stuttering a little here. I'm trying to remember what happened, what I actually did during those seven attempts. Because for the last three attempts, or whatever, I tried to make the Bed of Chaos my first priority when I fought the Bed of Chaos at all in one of my attempts. And then for five attempts or so, I just tried to develop oh, my build just in general the build of my character, like what stats should I have, what armor should I be wearing by the end game, and um, you know, what weapon should I be using, and I decided I would stick with this Y-hander for the entire campaign, but that I would be two-handing it the entire time, because I never actually one-handed this Y-hander through any attempt that I ever made, except in like one or two attempts where I tried to make use of the parry mechanic, because I would also need to get the Grass Crest Shield, which is somewhere in Dark Root when you go into this valley after killing this Black Knight. And if I ever got the Black Knight Halberd, I would never use it because uh, it would take too much of my levels. And also because, uh, you know, this Y-Hander would basically kick its ass for the purpose I was using it for. And the reason I'm telling you about this much later than I normally would have is because of why I needed all that stamina. I needed all the stamina to wield weapons and whatever, yeah. But also because I needed, you know, just the stamina itself for when I was going to roll or do whatever. And you, and that's probably just, yeah, it's a brain-dead statement. It's obvious. Everyone fucking knows that you need stamina to do these things and that you should manage it carefully. But recovering the stamina is another thing because I may be in a tight situation where... Um, like, I don't know, there may be a billion enemies on me and I need to get them off my ass. So I need the Grass Crest Shield so I can get out of the way as fast as I can or just hit the enemies or, like, roll and then do the stabbing thing with this Y-Hander, which is always useful. Now, 
is at this point that I decided, okay, maybe I should do some things that most people would do mid-game, but I should do them late-game. So like the Stray Demon, for example. I, I wouldn't normally fight it in any attempt at all, but I did fight it one time on that finishing attempt. And that's when I found out that you actually get a Titanite Slab for killing it. Which I desperately needed. And if I didn't know that was there, I probably wouldn't have gone back to the Undead Asylum at all. Except just by that one... Except just by pure luck, like, on that attempt. But... Let's talk about that attempt now. Because at this point, I knew that if I beat the Bed of Chaos, I was going to win. There was an, After I beat the Bed of Chaos, I could not lose against anything else. There was no way. So... I, I made that finishing attempt. It was attempt number fi number 51. I decided that I would also get the halberd, which you would find in the Undead Parish, in front of this gate that acts as a shortcut between Undead Parish and um, the, what is it, the Undead Burg Bonfire, where you go under this bridge, you kill this pig thing, and then you get to the Undead Parish Bonfire or whatever. Well, uh, yeah, I would do that, but backwards and get the halberd along the way, because I would need to get the key, this key thing, which I would need to get into Lower Undeadburg anyway in order to fight the Capper Demon. And then that would give me access to the Pyromancer, which I could free from his barrel-shaped prison, and he would go back to Firelink. And obviously I have to tell him that there's nothing in Blight Town to look for. And then I would get the uh, Large Ember, which is extremely important, for hopefully obvious reasons. And then I would bon and then I would bonfire back up to Firewing because I had set up a shortcut where you open that gate thing, you know, with that other zombie merchant. Who's like the first zombie merchant from Undead Berg, but it's the female one. Now Yeah. Finishing attempt. I will now tell you everything I can really tell you briefly, even though it's been a full thirty two minutes about the finishing attempt. The finishing attempt was uh, hopeful. I didn't think I would make it on that attempt, though. I guess I kind of just did the attempt as normal up to the point where I got to Anor Orlando, and that's. And I made this attempt on PC, by the way. I was using an Xbox controller. And that controller got very, very sweaty during that attempt. Because I had to fight Havel with uh, the bandit armor. And, uh, you know, the Swyhander, both of which were completely unupgraded. I think I was, like, very fucking low level. Like, super low level. Low level enough to be, like, you know, if you were... How do I even explain this? I think I, my levels were still in the single digits. They weren't, or else I wouldn't have been able to wield the Swyhander and the Halberd. But you get the point. I had enough endurance to dodge Havel, which was important. It was to the point where I didn't memorize which endurance level I should have in order to dodge any enemy a certain number of times. And how much vitality I should have in order to not get one-shot by them. But Havel was a special case because they one-shot you no matter how much armor you're carrying because you simply don't have enough health. And it's not like I wasn't going to be upgrading my health throughout the playthrough anyway. So basically my plan was face Havel as early as possible so you don't raise your expectations too high. So that's what I did. I faced him and uh, I beat him. I got the ring. I went up and got the halberd from the undead parish. I went about as normal. And uh, yeah. So I have got to. I fucking got to Ann Orlando and I made it. I got, I got to Ann Orlando and I made it to this bridge thing where you can access the main hall in the cathedral by jumping off of the staircase so that I can skip basically the entire dungeon. I got Havel's armor, and then after I beat Ornstein and Smo, uh, I bought Smo's armor, which I used for pretty much the rest of the game, but I wore Havel's armor for the final boss. 
And, um, yeah, so basically the rest of the playthrough went like this. I got to Bed of Chaos after poison misting the bug from behind this wall, which you could unlock by getting 30 humanity and giving it to this spider lady who's at the start of the Demon Ruins and behind a secret wall where a bonfire is. She is also a firekeeper. But I decided that I would get that bonfire but not do her quest line. And I would instead use the poison mist pyromancy uh, behind that secret wall that she opens to kill the bug thing. Now, that way Solaire wouldn't be able to basically kill himself by putting that thing on his head. So Solaire would be alive, and uh, the bug would also uh, give me what I needed, which was that glow-in-the-dark hat for Tomb of the Giants. Only problem was actually getting there because there's this bridge thing. And on the bridge is this um Titanite demon thing. I forgot what they're called. And uh yeah, basically the entire purpose of it is to just block you from getting past it so you don't get there. And then you deal with Solaire later. And, uh, well, yeah, there were about two times where I actually got past it, mainly because there were two times where I actually went on that bridge. Most of the time I didn't even, uh, I didn't, I, I never tried to kill it, I just tried to get past it, doesn't even fucking matter. Now, next order of business was getting past Bed of Chaos, which is a total asshole, because the Bed of Chaos doesn't primarily deal damage to get you to stop it, stop you from killing it, what it does is um, just knock you off cliffs, basically. It, it deletes the ground under you. It lights fire to fucking everything. It can firestorm you no matter where you are, including on the way, on, on, this, on, the, eh, on the slide thing, when you're going down into the boss arena. It can kill you in there if you're not careful enough. Not really, though. I don't think it can, but... It can definitely kill you anywhere in the boss arena. So my strat for Bed of Chaos was to go manually over to the side on the right. So that I would, um... So that I would hit it with a melee weapon like a, like the Zwei Hand or whatever. Go hit the point on the right, and then I would go to the point on the left. But I would stay behind this wall and shoot it with a bow and arrow until I hit it. You don't actually have to be able to wield it, because the arrow will go the same distance and deal at least a little bit of damage anyway, which is the important part. Now the scary part of Bed of Chaos, which I swear to god I'm going to have fucking PTSD flashbacks about one day, was jumping into this whole thing in the middle to land on this tree branch, so that you can get on top of these, uh, so that you can get down to this bug thing and kill it. And it's like the heart of the Bed of Chaos, which you need to destroy. And it dies in one hit. And the thing is, um, actually getting all the way, is uh, getting onto that little tree branch and climbing up it and then surviving while you're in the tunnel. Because I remember the one other time that I made it into the tunnel, it, it was like completely by accident. I wasn't even watching where I was going. Now what I do remember is... Um, making into the tunnel, and then I got firestormed out of nowhere, and I just kind of froze, and I died right there. And then I only made it into that tunnel one other time. And the thing is, the marker for where you should die if you fall too far is, like, way too fucking high. Like, that point flies high. It feels like you haven't even fallen off of the platform before you're already dead when you fall off uh, the floor into the abyss below. Like when it knocks the, the floor down under you. That's what I'm talking about, basically. So when I actually made it into the tunnel that one time, got rid of all the tree branches and killed it, uh, I thought I was having fucking hallucinations. Because it took me way too long to get down there, and it was complete fucking hell. So then I decided I would deal with... Um, Four kings. 
And the reason why was because that would mean dealing with um, New Londo Ruins first. And that's important because you can farm Titanite chunks, and um, that would be important for upgrading the sword. And then after I upgraded the sword up to plus 14, I would go into the Undead Asylum, fight the Stray Demon, and then get the fuck out of there. So at this point, I would kill the Stray Demon, and then I would get the Titanite Slab, upgrade it all the way to plus 15, which is the maximum you can upgrade anything in the game, actually. And, um... Or at least any melee weapon. I've never upgraded Pyromancy beyond that. Or Stabs, if they can even be upgraded, but maybe they can, I don't know. Fuck it. Or just any magic catalyst, pretty much. And the reason I state this is because I was using a melee weapon for the entire run, the entire thing. Except I used Pyromancy that one time to save Solaire's ass. Now, the Four Kings is sort of an easy boss fight, because you don't actually have to deal with four of them, you just have to do enough damage to the health bar. Which is at the bottom, and you might end up dealing with more than four just because they keep showing up. I don't think the game knows how to count or how much four is. But whatever. So you kill them, you get out of the abyss, and then you uh, fuck around up top. So my next stop was at um, Seat the Scaleless place. And what I did was I just kind of did everything normally. I just went up there, I got killed by him that first time. Which is okay, because you're kind of supposed to die to him, so it's still considered a no-death run. Since it's a scripted death. And, um, I ended up in prison, and then I got myself out of prison. And, uh, fuck, I've been explaining this for 42 minutes. Damn. And then, um, yeah, I kind of just went down to the crystal cave and killed him. So after I dealt with him, um... What else? Oh yeah. Fucking Nito. Fucking Gravelord Nito. At first, I feared Gravelord Nito more than the other bosses because he was kind of an asshole. Along with Seath the Scaleless. Because Seath kind of sucked. But that's mainly because I had difficulty getting behind his tail, trying to cut it off. Now, my main problem was, um, what was it? God damn it. My main problem was that I had just been the bed of chaos. I didn't think I would get this far again. So I wasn't really prepared to go in to fight Seath or Nito, but I kind of just did it anyway and won out of sheer luck. And by sheer luck, I mean so many attacks that Seath did were due to his completely brain-dead AI which sort of fired everything in the opposite direction of where I actually was, and I was able to get out of the way really fast. Or just run away from the boss, which would then uh, get me out of the range of its fire. So basically, my what I did was just kind of hit it over and over while, in it, while behind it. But then I realized even that wouldn't work, because it does this thing where it slams you, he Seath slams you with his tail during his boss fight, so uh, I kind of just had to deal with that. I had enough flasks anyway, I had 20 flasks. Damn, how did I actually... Did I just... No, I'm not that stupid. No, you, you kill Pinwheel to get the secret right, or whatever it's called. So I'm pretty sure I killed Pinwheel first, and then I killed Seath. And then I would go down and kill Nito. I think that was what I did. And then after that, I would go from the bonfire and Tomb of the Giants. And then go to the bonfire that's nearest to Nito, and then I would actually fight Nito. And, uh, yeah. I, I killed him. I, I did that. And I also got patches up to Firelink Shrine. Which up until this point I didn't know you had to kill Grave Lord Nito in, it, in order to actually uh, 
get him up there as a merchant. But uh, I, I guess I know that now. So fuck it. I went over back to Firelink Shrine. I finished um, Framp's quest line. And I went down into Firelink Altar and I just beat the game with Solaire as well. Except Solaire also had brain dead AI, so he was pretty much there to serve as a distraction. But I won. I fucking did it. I said I was going to do it. And I lied to you by saying I wasn't going to do it, and then I fucking did it. Alright? And I'm going to hold that over everyone who dares say I suck at any of these games. Come on. And I'm I am extremely happy. I d I don't think I have been this happy after beating a game since I beat Cuphead for the first time. Which was, in all honesty, much harder than Dark Souls in every respect. Like, my current Cuphead file, because I beat Cuphead again recently, because so, it was just a really fun game and I wanted to play it again. I died 700 times. Like, it, it was nuts. But I, fuck, but I fucking did that too. But I'm more proud of my Dark Souls achievement because it just took way too long. And I think I actually felt more ecstasy beating the Bed of Chaos than I did while beating Gwyn. Just because Bed of Chaos was kind of harder. Because of all the bullshit that it has. But I did it. I was talking about this for 46 and a half minutes. And now I'm finally done talking about it. And I will have to edit all of this shit later. And uh, that's about it.